Today is November 21. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton plans to spend more than $100 million on accident and emergencies island-wide to boost customer service and ease tensions at hospitals. The Compassionate Care Program has already been launched in six facilities, including the Black River and Victoria Jubilee Hospitals in 2018. In a media interview, Dr. Tufton said that the program includes customer service training. It also includes enhancing the quality of weight, so the aesthetics of the waste environment, more comfort in terms of seating and bathroom access will be improved. The decision was revealed following a meeting with the executive of the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association this week, who have expressed concerns about verbal and physical attacks on the frontline staff by angry patients. As of December 16, persons will be able to access a first 1,000 days app, an intervention for changing negative parenting behaviors to achieve positive outcomes for children. The targeted audience includes parents and caregivers. The Early Childhood Commission has launched the app and it's available on the iOS and Google Play operating systems. The first 1,000 days app is being rolled out on a phased basis. In the first phase, the app will cover pregnancy, infancy and toddlerhood, age 0 to 2. The second phase will cover the preschool years, age 3 to 5. And the third phase will cover primary years, age 6 to 8. The app is free of cost. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, is concerned about the scope and impact of violence against Jamaica's children. Country representative for UNICEF Jamaica, Mariko Kagoshima, when addressing Parliament this week, said they are alarmed by the rate at which children are being murdered. We are very alarmed by the rate at which children are being murdered. In 2018, 46 children were killed. From the start of 2019 to 14th of November, 41 children were murdered. This is beyond tragic. We are also very concerned that one out of four students aged 13 to 15 are bullied at school. And we are particularly concerned about two of the most widespread forms of violence against Jamaican children, violent discipline and sexual violence. Her address to Parliament marked the 30th anniversary of the CRC, adopted by some 70 heads of government on November 20, 1989. Kagoshima noted that violent discipline, which includes both physical and psychological punishment, affects 8 to 10 children across the country. She said that UNICEF recognizes the need for children to be disciplined, nonviolent methods should be administered. UNICEF recognizes the need for children to be guided and disciplined. However, we know from research and experiences across the world and here in Jamaica that there are many ways to raise respectful, well-mannered children without hitting them or hurting them emotionally. In the meantime, the UNICEF official said the organization remains distressed by the prevalence of sexual violence against children. Kagoshima said one in four Jamaican adolescents experience sexual violence at some point in life. Boys are also violated. UNICEF is also distressed by the prevalence of sexual violence against children. One in four, one in four Jamaican adolescent girls have experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. Boys are also being violated. We have heard too many horrific stories of children being sexually harassed, molested, molested, assaulted, and raped, almost always at the hands of people they know and trust, not by strangers. Sexual violence happens far too often, affecting far too many children for it not to be treated as an urgent national priority. 
Kagoshima said UNICEF stands ready to support the government of Jamaica, NGOs and civil society partners to address these significant challenges with greater urgency. The Violence Prevention Alliance, VPA, is inviting schools island-wide to register for the 2019-2020 Trees for Peace competition by November 30. To participate in this competition, schools are encouraged to share a picture of the planned area that will be converted into its Peace Garden, along with a registration form via email to vpajamaica at gmail.com. Registration forms can also be accessed on the VPA website at www.vpajamaica.org. UTEC President Professor Stephen Vassiani is the meeting office. In a statement Wednesday afternoon, the university announced that Professor Vassiani has indicated that for a personal and professional reason, he will not renew his contract when it expires on December 31. However, Pro-Chancellor Richard Powell said Vassiani has offered to extend his tenure to support the transitional arrangements for his succession. The Bureau of Standards BSJ and the National Compliance and Regulatory Authority, both agencies of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, have developed three standards for the liquefied petroleum gas industry sector. These standards are the JS41-2014 inspection, retesting and use of transportable gas, JS31-2014, the repair and rebuilding of welded steel cylinders for containing liquefied petroleum gases, and the JS25-2010, transportable gas containers. The ministry said the standards were developed in an effort to ensure the health and safety of the consuming public and ensuring that all key stakeholders in the industry are aware of the requirements for compliance with relevant standards. Chief Technical Director in the Ministry, Monique Gibbs, spoke of this at the opening ceremony of the Awareness and Engagement Session for the LPG Monitoring Program at the BSJ Multipurpose Facility in Kingston on Wednesday. Motorists should see a decrease at the pumps in the prices of gasoline and diesel effective Thursday, November 21. That's according to the latest ex-refinery costs from Petrogem. 80 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $129.41 and $132.25 per litre, respectively, down by 15 cents each. Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $135.84 per litre, following a decrease of 97 cents, while the ultra-low sulfur diesel is down by $1.67 and will be sold for $140.02 per litre. Meanwhile, kerosene decreased in price by $2.48 and will be sold for $114.81 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $45.89 per litre, up by $0.42. Cents. And butane liquid petroleum will be sold for $53.38 per litre, after an increase of $0.92. Cents. Do remember, marketing companies and retailers will add their respective markup to these prices. The U.S. dollar is being traded at $138.82, down by $0.68, cents, and that's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily foreign exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar is being traded at $104.57, down from $105.63, while the British pound sterling is being traded at $181.23, up from $181.06. Now for a few minutes on how you can live a healthy life through stress management. Sometimes there is no identifiable cause. Mental health issues such as depression or an accumulated sense of frustration and anxiety can make some people feel stressed more easily than others. We asked wellness practitioner Andrea Bryan, how can one know they are stressed out? Well, becoming irritable, mm -hmm. intolerable, uh, headaches, chest pains, that's another way, not being able to eat, loss of appetite. That's another way that you can identify that you're stressed. And in most persons that are stressed, they're, they're miserable. Can 
cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and death. So all the non-communicable diseases have a link to stress? Have a link to stress, a lot of them. Yeah, different phases of depression, right? So it's not that someone will just get up and be totally depressed today. It, it comes a little stress and it's not dealt with, it's not managed, and then you become more depressed. So you have different phases until you reach that mental phase where then you have to get medication and, and be monitored. So we don't want persons to get there. We want persons to become aware before they reach that stage. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we really have to help persons to deal with. Ms. Bryan says stress can come from situations beyond our control, but sometimes our habits are major contributions. A lot of us, we leave work at say six o'clock or five, you know, in the traffic, by the time we get home, it's a bit late, 7, 8 o'clock, and then we're having the heavy meal. Now, if you go to bed with a heavy meal, then your body will not be restored because the stomach takes a lot of blood to digest your food. So when you should be resting, not sleeping, because a lot of persons sleep, but they do not rest. So when you should be resting, your body has to be digesting all of that heavy meal. Tomorrow morning when you get up, you're tired. You're irritable. You can't function effectively at work or school. So you have to be careful and balance it. So Being physically active and eating healthy is important, but sleep is key. Ms. Bryan says our last meal should be four hours before bedtime. You can take action and manage your stress and instances of depression by monitoring your body. Take a stress test. This was developed in the UK at St. Thomas Hospital by three of the world renowned cardiovascular specialists. What I'm trying to do is to lower the incidence of heart disease, heart attack and stroke. So they developed this test so that persons can do and know that they are trending towards a heart attack or a stroke. It is a little device that we affix to your index finger and the computer reads whatever is happening within the system. So your biological age, which can be higher than the chronological, and at this time, then you are in serious trouble. You do not want that to happen. Your biological age it can be higher than your chronological, chronological age. Your biological age is really the health and status of what's the body. Everyone reacts differently when they feel stressed or depressed. Let's hear how some people handle their incidences of stress. Don't know a fashion bar, but the way I release my stress, I just get me out, get my big racing car, go up to Devon House, I just drive, and after I drive, I just sit and drink a bottle of water. So I release my stress. When I'm stressed, I sleep, I eat, and I read my Bible. When I read my Bible more, I get all the things off me, and I pray a lot. So, you know, I just eat that. Well, for me personally, I do various different things. So, for instance, I have money, I might go to one party or a bar or so, go have some drink. At a time, I might be you can get a phone call, somebody fulfill a promise to you, and you just feel good that he's just stressed out. Sometimes you can have sex, you have another time you can go for swimming, play some football, various different things ease stress. Well, I do my stress, my smoke. I drink, I party, I enjoy myself for free up my stress something day. As if I drink and smoke and them something day, the stress now go free. I enjoy myself in my house by listening to music, free up my mind, think. You understand what I say? I did something there. You know, I'm not stressed. I'm money, me, I say, right now, work and save. Like all of the young youth, them young girls, them work and save in the money. That means I stress and don't worry about stress. Leave stress alone. Stress now go nowhere. Massage therapy can be used for the treatment of mental and emotional problems, including stress, anxiety, and depression. Also considered a relaxation technique, massage therapy may be able to help reduce tension and elicit feelings of calm and deep relaxation. <music> Remember?
remember, when you feel stressed or even a little depressed, take control. Avoid caffeine, alcohol and nicotine. Indulge in physical activity. Get more sleep. Try relaxation techniques. Talk to someone. Keep a stress diary and manage your time. In regional news, Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has called on the opposition United National Congress, UNC, to come clean on the role it played on helping political consultant Cambridge Analytica engage in data mining in the last general election. He was speaking at a local government election meeting. His call comes less than 24 hours after opposition leader Kamala Fassad Basesa sought to distance her party from the firm. The UNC must tell us what they did to this country's database. They must tell us that meeting that they had where, where they have named people who are now disowning their own minutes. They must tell us that all these foreigners in their companies are mad people and they just decide to figure... But of course, they just told you your database doesn't matter. They didn't care. They didn't care what happens to you. They still don't care what happened to you. And they are lying to you so that you could just accept what they have done and they could continue to do it again. Last week, National Security Minister Stuart Young announced that a criminal investigation has started into the allegations from Cambridge Analytica whistleblower Christopher Wiley that the UNC hijacked the profiles of Trinidad and Tobago's citizens to manipulate the last election outcome. Guyana's government says it was blindsided by a decision by an Australian firm to fire 375 workers. The company, Troy Services, terminated the workers on Monday after they suspended operations last month following a death on one of their sites. We get more details in this Newsroom Guyana report. The company employed a total of 512 staff. Only 137 are being retained. Those persons are currently conducting exploration work, repairs to the processing plant, and security duties. The Australian mining company seized operations in early October following the death of Ryan Taylor, a geologist, at his Hicks site on October 8, which then resulted in a cease work order being issued by the Minister with Responsibility for Labour, Keith Scott. The order was subsequently rescinded by Minister of Social Protection and Amna Ali after it was agreed that Troy Resources will improve working conditions at its Kairouni Region 7 operations. But the government says it had no idea that Troy Resources would terminate the services of the employees. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman told the Department of Public Information Tuesday that the administration is disappointed with the decision taken by the company's board. But we're most disappointed, I have to say. Uh, I don't believe that we were given sufficient notice of this action. Uh, board ministers did engage the company's management last week and none of us had a sense that this was going to happen. We did hear that there was going to be a board meeting, yes, uh, and so we are disappointed to say the least in this uh, outcome. Trotman said that a ministerial committee will reach out to the company again. We believe that every door has been opened for them to resume operations in as short a time as possible. We've made that possible for them. And so we will be engaging the company about early restarting and as well, of course, bringing all of these workers back on. This is not the time of the year that we should see workers going home. They have homes, it's Christmas, it's the end of the year. So cabinet has asked that we have a, a ministerial subcommittee that will engage this company and all others that may be having issues at this point in time. The CEO of Troy Resources, however, claimed that it was unable to restart its operations due to financial issues. Some of our, our major problems have always been around the smart street pit. The wall instability that has caused us to shut it down several times for safety reasons. We've gone back, redesigned it, enlarged it, but what it does, it takes that stream of water out of the overall plan. Now, we have quite clearly done quite well for a while because we paid back all the loans that we used to, to build this place in the first place. So, that, so we square on that one. We still have some outstanding issues. But so, in terms of producing what we thought we would, no, we have never really met the targets because of external forces. 
Speaking at a press conference Tuesday night, Barbados Prime Minister Mayor Motley said the island-wide power outages that affected the country this week must never happen again. She has made it clear to electricity company Barbados Light and Power, BLNP, that it must do better. Power was restored to the island on Tuesday night after two straight days of blackout. We are very clear that there is nothing other than the loss of life inappropriately or corrupt practice practices that will be taken off of the table to resolve this problem. I think we have shared our perspective as a government with the Barbados Light and Power. They have agreed in principle that we will work together to make sure that whatever is done, including 24-hour days, including multiple teams, that we will look and revisit every assumption that has been made that would otherwise see new generation capacity not coming on board for another 12 to 18 months. This, we believe, is not tenable. We are going to manage this over the course of the next few days, but we have enough information before us to know that the question will be whether they can procure immediately tomorrow generating capacity or whether they will have to rent in the interim for a few weeks, have the generating capacity brought on the island while they procure the permanent one that will give the country at least the comfort of another minimum of 30 megawatts of power, what they call the energy bridge. In sports, we kick off with football as a national under-20 team will face Japan's under-20 team in a friendly match on December 28 in Nagasaki, Japan. According to the Jamaica Football Federation, the Jamaican squad for the game will be chosen and coached by national senior men's team head coach Theodore Whitmore. The game will allow the national technical staff to look at potential players for the 2022 CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers, which will kick off in August next year. And over to cricket, uh, Jamaica Scorpions are on their fourth straight win in the regional Super 50 competition after defeating the Barbados Pride by 27 runs at the Connery Sports Complex in St. Kitts on Wednesday. Batting first, the Scorpions posted 331 for 9 off their 50 overs with Nkrumah Bonner, top scoring with 112. The win takes Scorpions up to 16 points and 4 points behind leaders Barbados Pride. The Scorpions will be searching for their fifth consecutive win as they face the CCC Marooners on Friday. The Scorpions will end the group stages on Sunday against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes. And that's the news on PBCJ. Thanks so much for watching.